All right. Well, welcome to lesson three today uh, of our discipleship development program. Uh, our designer's image is called, and I trust that you have uh, gone through lesson one and two about reaching out, about becoming a witness for Jesus. Today, we're going to talk about um, the subject of relating the gospel to human needs. Okay, we know that as we reach out and be a witness for Jesus, we need to understand how we're going to reach out to people. When you want to share the gospel, you need to know how to share it to people and how to relate to them. Let's go into the introduction today. Point number one, man has a spirit, soul, and body. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, it says this, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we understand that man is made up of the spirit, the soul, and the body. Your spirit is the one that makes you want to connect with God. Your spirit is the one that makes you want to worship something or someone. And your soul realm is where your emotions are, where your intellect is, and that's where you feel things and you, you, you feel the, you empathize with certain people. And your body is obviously you know, the one that is carrying. The, the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which houses obviously your spirit and your soul and your emotions, intellect and everything. And we need to understand in point number two, God created man with needs. That's the answer you need to fill in, with needs. Every one of us, as a human being, we have needs. Okay? God always, in point number three, meet man at the point of his need. Whatever the need may be. We have to share a gospel so uh, that is real to people. So we must relate to uh, the needs of man. Okay, when you go out and share the gospel, you've heard this said before many times. Unless you show them that you really care for them before you even present uh, the gospel. There has got to be that. Uh, ability that people know that you genuinely care, okay? And, and that's, a, a, that's an important aspect of reaching out uh, to, to people with the gospel and to be a witness because, you know, there's no point just talking about it and doing nothing, okay? Something to note, we must not share a gospel that only meets the needs of people. Okay, Christ has to be the main subject when we share. This is because we want to produce real Christians and not Christians who only want their needs met all the time. You understand what this is? Because you see, the reality is man will always have need. Always. As long as man is alive, there is a need. Someone once said to me that you cannot actually meet every need. You cannot even try to uh, fulfill every man's desire or need. The moment you help fulfill this need of a person, you turn around and there's another need there waiting for you. So as we relate, as we reach out to people, we do your utmost best to understand their need. Okay? What is it that they need? Like if somebody... Uh, who has gone through a certain uh, pain or challenge in their life, they understand how it is to use their experience to reach out to someone who is going through what they had gone through. For example, you know, somebody who has recovered from cancer. They know what it is like to have that illness. Even as they were first struck with that illness, they will be thinking, how many more days have I got? To live, 
you know, it's my life. My lifespan is going to be shortened, okay? As they had that illness and their disease. But as they recover, they begin to empathize with someone who's going through the same thing. Okay, they begin to encourage them and say, "Do not give up. You know, do not uh, give in to this illness. Always have uh, the will to fight it and the will to survive." So this need that we have, as we go through it, we begin to encourage the other person. But more than just encouraging them to obviously uh, uh, don't give up, but we also need to present Christ. Christ, who is the ultimate healer, the ultimate person in your life and my life that we need to present as we share, as we encourage someone who is going through you know, those uh, obstacles in life, we bring in Jesus. We bring in Jesus, the ultimate focus. Because at the end of the day, even if they are healed in their body, but if their spirit is not born again, if their spirit is not connected with God, they have lost something. Okay? So let's carry on. Man has physical needs, which we all know. Example of food, shelter, and health. Okay? Everybody has physical need. Jesus said that God, our Heavenly Father, knows our physical and material needs. In uh, Matthew 6, verse 32, let's turn to that. Matthew 6, verse 32. For the pagans run after all these things, and your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. See that? So your physical need, which is food, shelter, health. I mean, everybody wants to be healthy. Nobody wants to be sick. Everybody wants to eat food and eat good food. And some people eat a lot of food. Some people eat too much food. Okay, yeah. But we all want the shelter over our head. You know, we want to have a place that we can call home. All those things, they are all the human and natural physical needs. And the Bible says in Matthew 6.32 that your father knows that you have those physical and material needs. But Jesus also told us what to do in Matthew 6 verse 33 so that God will meet our physical and material needs. What does he say in 6.33? A very famous scripture. It says, seek ye first. Okay. In fact, there was a word there before seek. It says, but. Whenever you read anything, there's a but there that you've got to think about it, okay? So there are all these things you need to do, but consider this. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day, has enough trouble of his own. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. See that? So you want to help meet the physical needs of the individual, okay? Which is obviously, like we said earlier, food, shelter, health. We want to encourage them. We want to talk to them about it. But we also need to bring in the aspect of God and his kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, okay? Point number C, Jesus showed he cares about the physical needs of man when he healed those who were sick and fed those who were hungry. We see this in the gospel books. Example, the feeding of the 5,000, the healing of the sick, the lame, the mute, etc. So Jesus actually showed that he cares about the physical needs of a human being. He understands that we all have a need that needs to be attended to, all right? But Jesus met their physical needs so that he could reach out to them and bring them to himself. Jesus did not just meet the physical need alone, but he actually brought them to God. Through the meeting of their physical needs, then Jesus began to present the message of the gospel to each of these people. 
so that they got to understand that as their physical needs are being met, there's another dimension, okay, obviously of their soul and of their spirit. And we need to also understand as we reach out and care for people, we help them meet their physical need, but don't forget that you need to bring them to Jesus. Reach out and bring them to Jesus. So uh, everything we do meet the physical and material needs of people. Uh, in the context of our subject, we must also have the purpose of winning that person to Jesus Christ. Okay? As you learn in this lesson to reach out, to be a witness for Jesus, man has physical needs. Point number two, man's emotional need. Okay? Man has got a physical need, but he's also got an emotional need. What is that? Point number eight, the need to be accepted. You need to fill in that blank there. The word is accepted. Man, a need. There's a need for man to be accepted. God accepts us. Okay? This is the reality. God accepts us. Sin has separated man from God. In Genesis 3, in the Old Testament, we know that as Adam and Eve sinned before God, there was a separation. But God made it possible for man to be reconciled to him. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19, that this is the message of reconciliation, that man, that God has uh, uh, wanting to reconcile man back to him. We were separated because of sin, and because of sin we have that emotional need to be accepted. You see, before man sinned, there was no emotional need to be accepted because they were walking in the Garden of Eden. They were fellowshipping with God. Everything was perfect. But because of sin, caused a separation. Now there is a need to be accepted. You know what I'm talking about? Every one of us, you see, we want to be accepted. That's our need. It's a need that is within every person. They need to be loved. They need to be accepted. Okay? Now, God invites all men to come to Him. In Matthew eleven twenty eight twenty nine 28, 29, and John six thirty seven, For those who come to God, we have the right then to become children of God. As we come to God, God invites us. The Bible says that He knocks at the door of every man's heart. As long as we open the door, He will come in into our hearts and we can then have a relationship with Him. We can then have fellowship with God. Point number two, number one is God accepts us. Number two, we accept ourselves. We accept ourselves because God has accepted us the way we are. See, as a human person, you have the need to be accepted. Okay? As God accepts you, what you got to do? You got to accept yourself. Okay? You cannot put yourself down. You shouldn't put yourself down. You shouldn't think that you are worth nothing. And that is the saddest part when people have lost their confidence, they've lost hope, they've lost, you know, I just, the whole thing of uh, who they are, the value of who they are. And they begin to have, you know, so low self esteem and not thinking that they are, they're not good enough, they're not going to amount to anything. Those things are. The things that the enemy was so into the hearts of men. But you got to learn to accept yourself for who you are. Because God has already accepted you. So when you understand that, hey, thank you God, you've accepted me. I need to now learn to accept myself. Then he changes us into the likeness of his son. As God accepts us, as you accept yourself, okay, Realize this, God will continue and He will begin the process of changing you to become more and more like Jesus. So as we reach out to people, as we share the gospel, as we become a witness for Jesus in reaching out, the key is that you want to bring them to Christ, bring them to Jesus, so that then they have an understanding that God has accepted them for who they are, they need to accept themselves for who they are. And then they begin to start on a journey where allowing God to change them bit by bit, slowly to become more and more like Jesus. 
So we talked about you know man's needs. Man has got uh, obviously um, physical need. Yeah, man has got emotional needs. One of the needs is to be accepted. The second one is the need to be loved. Loved. That's the word you need to fill in. It is say that man's basic emotional need is the need to love and be loved. God loves us. You got to understand that. First and foremost, the Bible says, God loves us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So that's the first thing, is to understand and to receive the love of God. His love is for everyone, but it is also a personal love. God's love is for everybody. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what background. It doesn't matter where you grow up. It doesn't matter what country you come from. God's love is for everybody. And His love is personal. Like in John 3 verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but shall inherit eternal life. Is it the need to be loved? Everybody wants to be loved and to give love. His love is one of sacrifice and without condition. Unlike other gods, where you have to appease in order for your request to be answered. So God's love for each one of us is unconditional. It doesn't matter where we come from. It doesn't matter what we've done. God's love for us is unconditional. He loves us. But the blessings of God upon our life is conditional. Okay, the Bible says if you were to obey, you will be blessed. If you were to honor, you were to live to, you know, what God wants you to do in your life, you will be blessed. But His love for you is unconditional. His love is also everlasting without end. So as you talk to people, as you reach out, okay, to be a witness for Jesus, you got to tell them that God's love for them is everlasting. Is without end. In John, Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says that. God's love for us is unending. As you share, let them know that God loves them and He created them for a purpose. He, he loves them unconditionally. Point number two, but love is a relationship where two persons' feelings are reciprocated. Okay, so God loves us and He wants us to love Him also. You know what love is? Love is an incredible thing. When you give love to somebody, there's a sense of that person would love you in return. So it's a two-way thing, okay? Love can't just be one way, especially when it comes to the human need we want to be loved and we also want to give love. And love, like I say, is a relationship where two persons' feelings are exchanged, reciprocated. We love him because what? He loves us first. Like I was saying earlier, when 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, we are to love him with all of our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. In Luke 10, verse 27. The need to Answer, okay, that's the word you need to fill in. The need to answer the basic questions of life. There is a need for every human being, okay? The need to be loved, the need to give love, okay? The need to be accepted. But there's also a need where a lot of human beings ask themselves, okay? The basic questions of life, what are they? Number one, where did I come from? Okay? When you, if you ever ask that question, where did I come from? That is a question of origin. Where did I come from? How did I appear? Okay? Something happened, obviously. Yeah? The answer is God made us. Genesis 1 verse 26 and 27. God created us. In the uh, scripture, uh, in, in Jeremiah, it says that you formed me while I, I am in my mother's womb. 
for I am wonderfully and fearfully made. So God made us. He formed us. The human life and the conception is an incredible thing. You know, most of us would not even understand how to comprehend that that aspect of creation. But we know that God formed us, He made us. The first question is, where did I come from? God made us. Number two, the second question, okay? This is the, the need to answer some of the basic questions of life. Who am I? It's the question of who we really are. The questions of life, who am I? Okay, where did I come from? Who am I? Answer, I'm a child of God who has received new life. John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. I am a child of God. I am created. I am formed. I am made by God and I belong to God. I am a child of God. You are a child of God. You are not just nobody, okay? One of the good friends that I have uh, in New Zealand, an elderly man who has now passed on, I will always remember what he said to me. He's got a Dutch accent. He says this to me. He says, you know what? I am a nobody, but Jesus made me somebody. He said, those words still linger with me. Those words still stays in my heart, in my mind. That, you know, truly, sometimes people think that they are nobody. But when they have an encounter with Jesus, when they met Jesus, Jesus changed them into somebody. The recognition that they are a child of God. They are not just nobody. Okay? We are all made and formed and created in the image of God and we are precious to God. Question number three, why am I here? Okay, let me rephrase. Question number one, where did I come from? Question number two, who am I? Question number three, why am I here? This is a question of purpose and meaning in life. So if you have ever asked those questions... The Bible has the answer for you. Our relationship with God, as you share with people, as you witness, as you reach out to people, you begin to even, you can actually ask them those questions. Where did you come from? Who are you? Why are you here? Okay, it's a question of purpose and meaning. The answer is this. Why am I here? To live my life for Christ and to die for Him if necessary. Okay? That means I'm here totally and ultimately for God. He made me. He created me. He put me here on this planet. He has allowed me to be born through, obviously, you know, uh, my mother, your mother, for a purpose. We're not here just to exist for you know, the years, whatever age, you know, 60, 70, 80, it depends on the individual. And to, to just exist and, and earn a job, get them living, uh, you know, buy a house, have this, have that, material stuff. It's not just all that. All that are the human needs, as we talked about. But there is a greater purpose, that we are here to live for Christ. We are here to show the world. We are here to uh, uh, reflect. We are here to created in God's image to reflect who God is to this world that we live in. And question number four, where am I going? It's a very important question. All right, where am I going? It's a question of where we will be at the end. The answer is, I'm going to be with my Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. All right. God created us to have a relationship with Him. As you witness, as you share with people, that's what you need to tell them. God wants to have a relationship with you so that at the end of the day, you're going to be where God is. You're going to share in His glory. You're going to share. You're going to be with Him in heaven. You're going to be so blessed by God while you're on this earth, okay, because 
when we are on this earth, what do we do? We bring heaven to earth to let people know that this is a blessed life. This is a life that is blessed of God, that we enjoyed every blessing from God. And point number three, man has spiritual need, okay? So man has got, like we said, what's the first one? Man has got a physical need. Number two, man has got emotional need. And lastly, man has got a spiritual need. That's very important. Why? Because man was made of these three aspects, spirit, soul, and body. So we're touching now on the spirit dimension. Man has a spiritual need, a spiritual vacuum that needs to be filled. They need to receive new life. As the word you need to put in, fill in the blank, life from God. The present is a vicious cycle and does not have lasting meaning. So when we receive that spiritual life from God, it's like a waking up, okay? It's like that born again experience where we, our eyes are suddenly open and say, oh God, thank you that there is more to this life. There is more just to to this life of working and you know accumulating things and 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 having things material possession this and that you know many people chase all these things but there's more to life than just the vicious cycle you heard me use this illustration before some of you have you know don't one man was asked uh, why did you go to work this is his answer. He says, I go to work so that I can gain the money. Why do you need to have the money? So that I can go and buy food, have shelter over my head and meet my physical needs. Why do you need food? So that I can have strength. Okay. So why do you need to have strength? So that I can go back to work again. <laughs> so This is the vicious cycle that people day in and day out are being so to speak, a uh, uh, program to follow and to live to, all right? But the need for you and I to receive this new life, to be born again in our spirit, okay? To understand that, God, there is something more than just the life. The need for spiritual life, spiritual fulfillment. That's why in every human being, there is an aspect of our spirit that yearns and desires to be connected to God, to be connected to something that is spiritual. That's why you don't find, obviously, animals wanting to worship. But the sad part is people worship animals instead of worshipping God. But animals and, 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 and things that we have, they don't have that spirit in them. Okay? The need to be forgiven. Okay? Man has a spiritual need and that need to be forgiven is what you need to fill in. From guilt and past doings. Romans 3.23 and Ephesians 1 verse 7. So every human being has a need to be forgiven and it's a spiritual thing okay to be forgiven will bring us that that freedom and that liberation to know that hey i'm not going to be judged for my past doing when we receive jesus into our heart this is what we need to share with people god will forgive them of their sins and of their past doing and there's a new life that will come into them the need for grace to live our life as a Christian, Titus 2 verse 11. Okay, this is the spiritual need. We need God's grace. The Bible says, by grace you are saved through faith. Our belief in God, as we encourage people to believe in God, as they believe, as they put their faith in God, it is by God's grace that they are saved. Not by our humans doing, it's the grace of God. Grace means what? unmerited favor. It's not something that you and I do to gain it. It's unmerited. It is God's favor upon mankind. And E, the need for grace so that we can stand strong during sufferings and problems in life. 
2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 to 10. The need for grace. God's grace is upon every one of us. So that as you go through some of the challenges and the you know, sufferings and problems of life, you're going to understand that God's grace is on you so that you can learn to persevere. You can learn to say, God, I know that you are with me. Your grace is sufficient for me, Paul says. And your strength is made perfect in my weakness. God's grace is grace upon grace. Thank God for his grace upon all of us. In conclusion, love is the key, okay, to meeting the needs of people. Always remember that. Love is the key. You don't want to meet a need just because you want to meet it. You want to meet it because of love. God saw your need and my need, the need for forgiveness, the need to be healed, the need to be reconciled. And then God, through his love, sent Jesus. That's what we need to tell people. You see, all those needs that they have, it is because of God's love and God's grace. Love is the key. Okay? We must be willing to be involved with people and love them with the agape love of God. That means love them unconditionally. As you reach out to people, there will be uh, obviously some times of challenges where things may not be reciprocated. They may not return something to you, but it's okay. As long as you reach out to them with genuine love to show the love of God. As you speak, as you share, as you witness, tell them about the love of God. True love hurts. It hurts God to give his son. It hurts Jesus to die on the cross as he had to be separated from the Father. Everyone who has loved deeply knows that love hurts. It may hurt when people are not uh, responsive to your sharing. It may hurt when people are, uh, you know, curd or slam the door when you try to share the gospel. Sharing God's love may hurt, but it also heals. Okay, remember that. Sharing God's love may hurt, but don't forget, God's love also heals. There are days when you go out, when you share with your friends, they may reject the gospel, but at the end of the day, if they're in a position of need, I can, I can assure you, anybody who is physically sick and have a terminal illness, if you go out there and share with them and say, can I pray for you? I want to share God's love to you. He cares for you. I can assure you that most of the time they will accept the prayer that you would offer because they are in a needful position. And anything that will help them to ease the pain, to just have that comfort, they will receive it. And as you reach out to be a witness for Jesus in in, in whatever area God puts you in, whatever situation that you find yourself in, as you reach out, as you care for the physical needs of the people, also remember, bring Jesus into the picture and share what is the key, the love of God, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God for them. So as you learn to be a witness, reaching out, Remember, humans have their needs, but we need to reach out, care for them, and share Jesus. Bring Jesus into the picture. Okay, Bring Jesus into the conversation because ultimately God cares for them more than just their need physically, but he also cares for them for their spiritual need. So may God bless you as you uh, take this lesson into board and and continue to um, be disciple for the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. See you in the next lesson.